In the shadow of the American Civil War, a sinister force emerged, cloaked in the guise of law, designed to crush the hopes and dreams of a newly freed people. The Black Codes, enacted across the southern states in the years immediately following the war, were not just a set of oppressive regulations. They were a brutal system of control, a last-ditch effort to maintain the old order of racial dominance. These laws were a stark reminder that freedom, while proclaimed, was far from guaranteed. For the newly emancipated African Americans, the transition from slavery to freedom was anything but smooth. Instead, it was a treacherous journey fraught with legal traps and social barriers, all designed to keep them in a state of perpetual subjugation. The Black Codes were a direct response to the end of the Civil War and the abolition of slavery. Southern states, reeling from defeat and the loss of their economic foundation, sought to reimpose as much control over African Americans as possible. These laws were a mosaic of restrictions, each piece designed to limit the rights and freedoms of black people in every conceivable way. From the moment a freedman set foot in a state, his every move was scrutinized and restricted. The codes dictated where he could live, what work he could do, and even how he could speak in court. In South Carolina, for example, the very act of entering the state was fraught with peril. The Constitution of 1865 allowed the legislature to regulate immigration, and the resulting law required any person of color to post a bond of $1,000 within 20 days of arrival, guaranteeing their good behavior and support. This was a crushing financial burden for most freedmen, effectively barring them from entering the state. Even if they managed to navigate this hurdle, the codes ensured that their lives within the state would be heavily regulated. Work, the cornerstone of any free society, was one of the most heavily controlled areas under the Black Codes. In South Carolina, a freedman could only engage in certain occupations, primarily farming or servitude, and even then, he needed a special license. These licenses were costly, ranging from $10 to $100 annually, and could be revoked at the discretion of a judge. The codes also prohibited freedmen from engaging in certain trades, such as manufacturing or selling liquor, effectively limiting their economic opportunities to the most menial and lowest paying jobs. In Mississippi, the regulations were even more stringent. Freedmen were required to have a lawful home or employment by a specific date each year, and to carry written evidence of this. If they left their place of employment without permission, they risked losing all the wages they had earned. The codes also dictated the terms of labor contracts, which had to be in writing and approved by a judge. These contracts were binding on the laborer and his family, and any breach could result in fines, physical punishment, or even forced labor on public works projects. The codes went beyond economic control, penetrating every aspect of daily life. In Louisiana, laborers were required to work specific hours, obey all orders, and take care of the employer's property. Any disobedience, loss of time, or damage to property could result in fines, which would be deducted from their wages. The codes even regulated the number of visitors a laborer could have and the hours they could receive them, further isolating freedmen from the broader community. The right to bear arms, a fundamental aspect of self-defense and citizenship, was also stripped away. In many states, freedmen were prohibited from owning or carrying weapons leaving them defenseless against violence and intimidation. This was a deliberate strategy to keep African Americans in a state of fear and vulnerability. The courts, which should have been a refuge for the wronged, were instead a tool of oppression. Freedmen could only testify in cases involving other freedmen, and even then, their testimony was often discounted in favor of white witnesses. Judges and juries, firmly believing in the racial hierarchy, were quick to convict and harsh in their sentencing. The legal system was rigged against freedmen, ensuring that they had little recourse against the myriad injustices they faced. The Black Codes were not just a set of laws. They were a comprehensive system designed to re-enslave a people in all but name. They were a last-ditch effort by the defeated South to maintain control over a population that had, on paper, been granted freedom. The Codes were a brutal reminder that the end of slavery did not mean the end of racial oppression. Instead, they marked the beginning of a new era of struggle, one that would continue for generations. In the end, the Black Codes were a stark testament to the depths of human cruelty and the lengths to which some will go to maintain power and control. They were a dark chapter in American history, 
a reminder of the long and painful journey toward true freedom and equality. Despite the obstacles, the resilience and determination of African Americans shone through, inspiring future generations to fight for their rights and dignities. The struggle continues, but the spirit of those who came before us remains unbroken.